In this tutorial, we're going to give our player some movement and make him run perpetually forward. So let's do that. First, let's go ahead and delete this bridge from our scene. This is so that we could develop our game quicker. We'll fix it later, but right now all we care about is the player's behavior. Next, click on the player's game object from the hierarchy and attach a character controller component to it. This is what's going to let us push our player around the scene. Let's scroll closer. We can see that the capsule created by the character controller isn't centered properly. It needs to encompass the entire body of the player. So let's elevate it by one unit, and let's change the radius, because this seems too wide. Let's make it, say, 0.3. Now let's go ahead and create a folder by clicking the plus sign, and we'll name it Scripts. This is where we're going to keep all of our scripts. It will make our project much more organized. Double-click on the folder and hit the plus sign once more to create a C-sharp script. Let's name it player controller because it's going to control the behavior of our player. Now we need to attach the script to our player game object by selecting the player's game object from the hierarchy and dragging the script onto it, like so. And before we open the script in Visual Studio, let's make sure that Visual Studio is integrated into our Unity development environment. Select Unity from the menu bar and go to Preferences. If you are on Windows, go to Edit and then Preferences. Go to External Tool and make sure that Visual Studio is selected from the External Tool Editor. Also, hit Regenerate Project Files to be sure that Visual Studio is properly integrated with Unity. Now close this window and open up the Player Controller script. This is the default layout of every Unity script and it's written in C Sharp. Now I could sit here and tell you what each line does with excruciating details, but honestly, it won't be of much help to you. We'll instead learn bit by bit how to use scripts in Unity, and then you'll have a much better idea of how scripts work in Unity. The first bit is that all of our code needs to be contained within these curly brackets, else it won't work. So if I go outside the curly brackets and type int a equals 5, semicolon, it will show an error even though the expression is valid. So our code must be within the brackets. The second thing you need to make sure of is that the name of your script in this line matches the name you've given it in the Unity Editor. Letter for letter, case sensitive. Otherwise, your script won't work. And don't forget to update your Visual Studio to the latest release. If you're on Windows, just go to Visual Studio Installer from the Start menu and update your Visual Studio accordingly. It looks like I have to update mine. We'll resume this tutorial after it finishes. Okay. So let's explain why we need scripts in game development and in Unity specifically. The character control component that we have attached to the player game object can't do anything on its own. We need to tell it how to move in the scene and under what conditions, otherwise it just sits there doing nothing. So let's make it do something, i.e. move the player forward. The first thing we need to do is to activate the character control component that is attached to this player from inside the script. To do that we need to create a variable of type character controller. A variable is just something that stores a value for it to be accessed and modified later in the code, hence the name variable, because it can vary. Type in the variable type first, followed by the variable name, before the start function. And as you can see if I type ch, Visual Studio auto completes the rest for me, which is very nice. This means that it's properly integrated with Unity. We'll name our variable small c character controller, and follow it by a semicolon to end the line. So nothing should come after the semicolon in this line. Now you could name your variable anything you'd like, just make sure that you name it something logical, so you know what it does. Also, when naming two words variables in c -sharp, we use the convention of making the first word all small letters and capitalizing the first letter of the second word. It's just a convention that we'll be following. Now we've declared the variable and haven't done anything with it. We need to link it with the character controller component that's attached to this player game object. To do that, let's step into the body of the start function, and we know that this is a function because of the parentheses and the curly brackets that come after the name. And if you're wondering what's a function, a function is just a block of code that's organized under a specific name. In this case, it's start, and this start function is a predefined function in Unity. In the next tutorial, we're going to write our own functions, and then perhaps you'll have a better understanding and appreciation for functions. Let's step into its body and type character controller small c and set it equal to this dot get component bracket character controller parentheses. Terminate the line with a semicolon. This line simply means in C sharp get me the character controller component that's attached to this game object and assign it to the character controller variable left of the equal sign. 
And the reason we do this is because there could be other character controllers attached to different game objects in the scene. There could be other players in the game, if you think of a multiplayer setting, for example, each one with their own character controller component. 